How's it going everybody, Dato Doi here with another Dragon Ball Fighters video, and for this video I thought we'd cover the top 5 characters in Dragon Ball Fighters, at least in my opinion. As always, feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree with anything I say in this video. Uh, this is a very debatable topic of course, so I would love to hear all of your thoughts on this. Before we get into the real heavy hitters though, I do want to go into an honorable mentions list of sorts. Just to name a few, we have Android 21, Gotenks, and Super Saiyan Vegeta. Android 21, of course, has a lot of good damaging tools and can really control the neutral with her long-reaching normals. Honestly, if I was listing all of the things that made her good in neutral, we'd be here for a lot longer than I think an honorable mention needs time for. Uh, but yeah, she's really great in the neutral. If you play this character, you should excel at locking down your opponent's space and eventually leading into a big combo. Gotenks is here simply because of his re-stand efforts, his insane block strings, and out of all these characters, I feel like Gotenks could have made top 5 if I gave this list a little more time as we watch the meta develop. Super Saiyan Vegeta has always been a pretty solid character by himself, but what really made him great was his assist, and with the nerfs to it, I feel like he has fallen down the tiers at least a little. The assist is still godlike and probably the best in the game, but it's nowhere near what it used to be, so that puts Vegeta comfortably in my honorable mentions list. As these are just my honorable mentions, I really don't feel like they need to be tweaked in any way. They're plenty strong enough as it is, and they don't really break the game in any way, so I would be perfectly fine with just seeing these characters stay the way they are. With the honorable mentions out of the way, we can finally get to the top 5, starting with, of course, number 5. This one was the hardest. I was trying to decide between two characters, that being Goku Black and Android 16. Uh, and in the end, I decided to go with Android 16, purely because after the nerf, he's no longer what he used to be at all, in my opinion. Uh, the hard knockdown changes really took away from his mix-up, and it just feels like you're fighting a really fair and balanced character now. And the reason he still gets the number 5 slot over Goku Black is that I feel like he has a lot more grimy stuff. Uh, don't get me wrong, I expect a lot of people to disagree with me here, and that's fine, because I feel like if it were a different day and I had just faced a really good Goku Black, I could probably see myself going the other way on this one, but as of right now, I'm going to say Android 16 still has his spot in the top 5. Uh, and Goku Black gets booted back to probably 6. As for what I would change, uh, really the answer is not much. They already got rid of a lot of what really bothered me with Android 16 as a character, and a lot of what made him feel unfair was the fact that any time he touched you, he could practically get a free hard knockdown and follow it up with that mix-up. It was a really annoying thing to play against. Now that that's gone, really Android 16 doesn't bother me as much. Add to that the fact that they took away the projectile armor on his uh, 5 heavy and down heavy, and you're looking at a character that feels like a much more toned down version of what he was in the past. And as if number 5 wasn't a hard enough choice, I also struggled with picking a number 4. Uh, this came down to in between number 4 and number 3, and in the end I had to go with number 4 being Bardock. Uh, he's a character I have a lot of experience with, so I can probably talk about this character the most. Really what Bardock specializes in is good block strings, great damage, highly effective when utilized with assist, can cover a lot of screen space using his 236L, easy sparking to death combos, and a whole lot more. Really the only thing this character truly struggles with is his poor range game. Uh, that is easily made up with the fact that you can either A, cover it with assist, or B, just really make sure that you're super dashing when your opponent tries to fire any normal key blast, and make sure you're constantly being aggressive and on the move uh, when they're firing beams. Uh, just make sure to block and not get hit, of course. Uh, but other than that, Bardock should serve you extremely well. Now, as for what I would tone down with Bardock, I gotta say there's a lot of areas you can go with this. You could do something to change the way his level 1 Saiyan spirit works. Uh, that would kind of make the character a little less fun, though, so that's not really a nerf I would like to see. Uh, you could change the way his auto combo works uh, to allow for not-so-easy pickups after combos, but I feel like that's only solving half of the problem really, he can still just convert with two medium. And really if you have to take drastic measures, you could probably go with a little less frame advantage on Bardock overall. If he catches you in certain moves, you're going to have to block for an even longer amount of time. Uh, but other than that, Bardock is just a character that really excels with the system mechanics in Dragon Ball Fighters, so I think he's always a character that we're going to see hover around at high level play. After Bardock coming in at number four, we have Kid Buu coming in as the third best character in Dragon Ball Fighters. This guy is just a monster when you're blocking against him. He has an insane amount of mix-ups and great tools that allow him to really serve as a great team player, uh, which is a really weird role for Kid Buu of all characters to serve, but regardless, he serves it very well. His assist serves as an amazing lockdown tool. Uh, really, once your opponent blocks it, they're in for a wild ride. Uh, his DHG is amazing. His level 1 brings them up into the air and then back down. Uh, and for certain teams, it allows them to get off two level 1s with the same character resulting in huge damage setups. Uh, his candy beam places him from all the way across the screen, and if it lands right on top of the opponent, uh, really easy conversions there. 
I've already covered it, but I'll say it again. The mix-ups with Kid Buu are insane. Uh, certain setups are going to leave you scratching your head as to how you just got hit by that. Uh, and once he hits you, he can lead into even big damage by himself. And of course, this character with Sparking Glass is just a whole nother nightmare to deal with. Uh, really, if you see Kid Buu on the enemy team, I would probably suggest trying to get him out of the way first, if that is, of course, an option for you. As far as changes to the character that would make him feel a bit more fair, uh, there's not too much that I can actually suggest here. A lot of what makes Kid Buu so oppressive is the fact that he's very ambiguous in terms of his cross-ups, so maybe addressing that in some way could help out. Of course, you could always hit his assist, but I feel like that might not be the best way to go about doing things in this case. Maybe changing the way his level 1 scales combos, or just the way his level 1 operates, might be a way to go about things. But because of my lacking experience against Kid Buu and playing as Kid Buu, Really, I don't know what the secret would be to making this character feel a bit more fair overall. Coming in at number two, we have Adult Gohan, the man, the myth, the legend himself. This character has been running rampant at high levels of play, mostly due to how effective he is on block and how easy it is to mix somebody up with Adult Gohan. Of course, he also has the added on bonus of having really good combos as well. But like I said, most importantly, he's good on block and he can mix people up really easily. And this is mostly due to how fast and ambiguous he is, whether he's going high or low, if he crosses you up and holds down key, he's the only character that can fast fall, and then he also has a light that hits low first really quickly. And of course, added on to that, when he's hitting you low, he is in a standing position because really he's just stepping on your toes. So really it's hard to block if you're not already predicting he's going to go for that. Now in the last patch, Gohan did receive a couple of pretty sizable nerfs. He can no longer get a hard knockdown by using his EX uh, backhand slap, uh, which is very good. And his EX legs don't entirely lock up the opponent now. If they wanted to nerf this character even more, they could easily lock up a few of the things he can do now behind some of the leveling up mechanics he has. As of now, it's mostly just for one bar you get access to everything, and then for more bars you get a little access to a little extra damage on the side, uh, where instead they could unlock it slower over the cost of more bars. Or if they want, they could just remove his fast fall or change up the way his lights work that hits low. All of these things would hurt Gohan. Uh, how much would be the question? And finally, at number one, we have Cell, the definition of perfection. Pretty fitting character choice overall if they were going to make a top tier. Uh, much like the lore, Cell is comprised of a lot of different elements, all of which work together very well to create the perfect fighter. He's got a little bit of everything. He's got good vanish combos, he's got a good assist, he can help out with the team, but also makes great use out of assist. He can easily get people to the corner, keep them in the corner, get huge damage off of corner combos, and has great supers to DHC into. His block strings and mix-ups are also very strong, and you have to consider that when you're playing defense against him. And overall, it makes the character a very well-rounded character in my book, and well-rounded in the sense that in some of these aspects, he's better than a lot of other characters, where in others, he's at least tied with them. To nerf this character, I don't think it would really be too hard. All you have to do is take away at least some of his tools, or at least tone them down in some regard. Uh, that could either be block strings, mix-ups, supers, really anything they want to target, they can target with Cell and pretty much get away with at least making him a passable character, just not as high tier as he, as he is right now. And with that said, that's my list for the top five best characters in Dragon Ball Fighters. Again, I do want to stress that this game is very well balanced. Any character and any team can win against even a team comprised of the three best characters. Again, let me know your thoughts on who the best characters are in this game, and let me know down below if you'd like to see a video like this, but covering the five worst characters, and instead of how they can be nerfed, we can replace that with how they can be buffed. While you're down in the comments, if you like this video and channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I'm Dato Doya, and I'll see you in the next video.